Hey there guys, what is going on? We do have the mid-season update for Cold War and Warzone Season 3 to talk about here. We've got the new we got the new roadmap here, which is very, very cool. Of course, in Warzone section, we have the Nakatomi Plaza building being added, which is very, very cool. That's that's straight out of Die Hard. That's so super cool. We've got survival camps, power grab, different game mode. Of course, there's an action-themed loot table, apparently, which is interesting. And a CIA outpost as new sort of like locations and stuff and themed areas of the map. In the multiplayer stuff that, of course, we care about a lot, we are getting the new map standoff, of course. An absolute classic from Call of Duty's gone by. What a banger. Such a good map in this game, which is so very exciting to add this one. I believe if we read it a little bit further, they're also adding this to the 12v12 playlist and adding some larger maps to the 12v12 playlist as well, which I was very, very excited about. Very keen on them doing that. So that's very, very good as well. We're getting the new Duga multi-team stuff as well, which is not super exciting, but again, quite an interesting little addition. We're getting Die Hard Point. <laughs> that's, uh, that's, that's pretty clever there. We got Rambo's Gun Game and Action Hero Mosh Pit, which is, of course, going to be these like very, very close quarters maps and everything. And I believe there's also a standoff 24-7 playlist as well. We are getting, as usual, new bundles with this, the Die Hard bundle, of course, the Rambo bundle. The, 80, <laughs> the 80s Action Hero Rewards, of course, is very, very exciting as well. We're getting the new weapons in the mid-season, of course, the baseball bat, just bonk, and then the Amp 63 in season. So I don't actually think we're getting this when the update does drop, which is a little strange. That is going to be a little later on, I think. Just that, that's weird, but whatever. I was very keen on that, but apparently that's not going to happen just yet, as well as the ballistic knife in Warzone. Moving on down here, of course, this is just the details of what they are doing with this 80s themed event. Very, very exciting. There's challenges to do, weapon skins to unlock, very, very exciting stuff all around. As usual, there is a weapon balancing, tuning, lots of good things, weapons changing, and all this other lovely stuff in this update. So it's very, very exciting. They've taken a look at a lot of the snipers, a lot of the assault rifles, which is very cool as well. New weapons are also on the way with the baseball bat melee weapon and the AM63 machine pistol arriving in season. So the baseball bat will launch exclusively in Cold War this season, while the AM63 will come to both Black Ops Cold War and Warzone later in the season. So it doesn't look like that is coming when the season does drop, which is a little disappointing, but... It is what it is here. And as you can see in this lovely picture here, this is what we're going to be able to do to ruin the game for people. So that's, yeah, just, just keep that in mind. We're, we're waiting for this. This is going to be, that's going to be pretty good. Of course, if we scroll a little further down, you can see some screenshots of the lovely standoff map. This is going to be so, so cool, guys. I'm so excited for this. This is one of my favorite maps in previous Call of Duty games. Continuing on our merry way. Of course, there is the new weapon tuning patch, which we are very, very excited about. There is a particular change that they've made here, which sort of breaks my brain. A little bit and we'll talk about that more in a second as well but as it says here this includes adding a custom flinch effect to all snipers so we're getting some flinch on the snipers which is so so good i've been saying that for so long man need to flinch on those snipers and individualizing ads momentum for each sniper rifle so it's going to feel a little different to aim down sight with each of these guns because there's going to be a little bit of added momentum on the sort of moving it in and out of your eye so that's going to be a little interesting here there is, as I said, the weapon tuning all sniper rifles has been tuned. In this update, we are revising sniper rifles with two goals in mind. To create a more meaningful gameplay between sniper rifles and other weapon classes, and to better define the role of each sniper to give them more individuality and specialization. To those ends, the following updates have been made. I've said this before, fighting against a sniper doesn't feel very good in this game. So hopefully the difference that they've made here can make it feel a little bit better, adding some weapon flinch, adding some other statistics that make it a little bit different. As I said, they have added a custom flinch for every single gun. We've created a specific sniper flinch that moves the weapon aim while being hit. This flinch is more pronounced in ADS. Attachments that reduce flinch have been factored into this as well. So you'll notice that as we go through a lot of these balance updates, the flinch handles have all been sort of reduced slightly to account for this new weapon flinch. The ADS momentum, as we were talking about, as well as now individualized for each sniper rifle, ADS momentum is that feeling of weightiness as the weapon exits and re-enters ADS. So apparently they consider the LW300 the baseline sniper, and I would agree with that. That is very, very good weapon in this game. It combines pretty decent one-shot kill capacity while being fast enough in that aimed end side speed for into fire speed and stuff to scan the horizon and find new targets quickly. We have increased the bullet velocity from 550 to 580, which is not a super significant change, and reduced the ADS in momentum from 0.2 to 0.233. So this is going to feel slightly slower, I believe, to aim down sight, but just keep that in mind here. Of course, there are a load of different attachment changes with bullet velocities and stuff like that to account for the new numbers. We've got like reductions to the specific barrels. The Tiger Team barrel copped a big nerf to its bullet velocity, and this is, of course, to account for a new bullet velocity number in the base weapon. Again, the reduced flinch resistance bonus from the drop shot handle has been decreased from 50% to 33%. Big one here is, of course, the airborne elastic wrap flinch resistance from 90% to 25%. So they don't want that to just be the all-encompassing best grip option anymore. 
they're just sort of adjusting some of these flinch numbers, maybe having like the SSAR jungle group with the flinch and then having something like the airborne elastic grab have those stats as well, but a little bit less flinch resistance. So keep that in mind. We've increased the sprint to fire time penalty from the airborne elastic grab handle from 15% to 18%. Again, that's fairly interesting. And they have reduced the aim down sight time bonus from the airborne elastic wrap handle attachment from 12% to 5%. Well, well, you're not going to use that at all then, are you? You can use the serpent wrap. Okay, we'll have to wait and see what happens with those because this is fairly interesting balance changes, but it is good to see the snipers finally getting addressed. A lot of people have been complaining about that for far too long, man. The Pellington 703 is designed to be that quick handling, quick scoping, very, very quick sniper, of course, being able to shoot people, move around the map quite easily. And as a result, we have seen an increase to the sprint to fire speed from 0.45 seconds to 0.433 seconds, which is quite nice. Little increase there. They have reduced the bullet velocity as a result though from 500 to 478 and increased the aim down sight time from 0.55 to 0.583. So again, a little slower in this regard. Again, different changes to the attachments across the board in bullet velocity with the team, these different barrels, bullet velocity bonus from the target team barrel from 50% to 30%. The flinch resistance have all been changed in these options as well, 80% to 67%, 90% to 50%, 90% to 25%. So the airborne elastic graph is just gonna be like not usable anymore, which is really weird considering it is like one of the last unlocks that you can get. And reduce the aim down sight time bonus from the airborne elastic wrap handle from 12% to 5%. So yeah, I don't think we're going to be using this too much. This is the M82. But anyway, they have actually made this a little bit better. They've increased the one hit kill potential to the mid torso. So you can shoot one shot kills from a little bit lower down. They have actually increased and made the aim down sight time a little bit faster here from 0.7 to 0.666, which is really nice. Aim down sight ADS momentum from 0.2 to 0.183. So it's going to be a little bit faster out and a little slower in. So that's fairly interesting. And they reduced the firing speed from 0.33 to 0.833. Again, very similar changes to the attachments here. I'm not gonna read all of them again from 90% to 25%, 12% to 5%. So keep an eye out on these attachments. These are gonna be a little bit worse for your snipers across the board. But again, they'll still be probably the better options. Like the Tiger Team Barrel is still probably gonna be a pretty good option because it does increase that damage. But again, take a look at your sniper attachments. This is gonna be all different again. And the ZRG 20 millimeter is the big bad boy. Like. It's gonna be slow, it's gonna be lean, it's gonna be mean, it's gonna be hitting them shots and absolutely blowing people apart. The aim down side speed again reduced by about 0.03 milliseconds again. So a little slower, bullet velocity reduced by two. I don't know why they did that, that's it's very strange. The ADS out momentum has been changed again from 0.2 to 0.183 and the ADS momentum in has been increased from 0.2 to 0.283. So again, a little slower on the in, a little faster on the out. Again, changes across the board to a lot of the attachments. Again, we're not going to read all these out because they are very, very similar across the board again. So full of velocity, of course, flinch resistance, and then sprint to fire speed and aim down side speed have all changed on a lot of these attachments. So again, take a look at your sniper attachments and just keep an eye out. And the Swiss K31 is going to be a little different as well. The Swiss K31 does have 25% less flinch than other snipers. That is quite interesting because it is fast, it's mobile but it does reduce the bullet velocity as a result. So that's kind of a little lame, but it is what it is. Again, aim down side speed, bullet velocity, flinch resistance, sprint to fire speed changes across the board here. Same across these attachments. So keep that in mind. These numbers might be slightly different, but again, aim down side speed reduction from 12% to 5%. So that's, that's interesting. All right, so they have actually changed all of the assault rifles as well. We've improved bullet velocities across the board with one exception to allow assault rifles more innate long distance advantage over submachine guns. The FFAR1 has had its bullet velocity reduced in exchange for an increase to its maximum damage, which we've been asking for since the beginning of time, as well as a recoil reduction, but it is what it is, you can't have it all. We've also standardized headshot modifiers on assault rifles with this update that in the 5.56 ammo have a 1.4 times, so that's stuff like, that is stuff like, what do we got here, your Grozer. 1.25. So this used to have 1.4, now it's got 1.25. So that's going to make the weapon a little bit worse overall. So the Krieg 6 has increased its bullet velocity from 625 to 686. This is a little bit good of a change. Like that's not super significant in terms of an increase, but it is still a nice buff there. Also increased the bullet velocity bonus from the Ranger barrel from 100% to 126%. Again, meaning we can hit the target and have better hit detection from further away. So this is going to make the Krieg 6 quite nice here and reduce bullet velocity penalty from the contour barrel from 25 to 12%. So the Ranger barrel is probably gonna be the one you wanna go with here to just increase that bullet velocity to 126%, which is about 1360. The AK-47 has increased the bullet velocity from 490 to 702. Why did they do that? The FFAR1 has increased its maximum damage from 27 to 28. Again, this is one of those things that's not really going to make a super large difference, I believe, but we'll have to wait and see with this and reduce the bullet velocities from 705 to 629. So this is a fairly significant nerf 
but a nice little buff to the actual damage numbers. Grozer, again, headshot multiplier has changed and the bullet velocity increased slightly. Nothing super significant there. The Grozer is still going to be pretty good, but a little bit worse if you are getting those headshots. QBZ increased the bullet velocity from 625 to 671. Nice little boost there. The QBZ is not bad, but I could probably see it getting some more changes to be better in line with some of these other weapons. The Fire 83 actually getting a couple of interesting changes here. Increase the headshot multiplier from 1.25 times to 1.4. This is really nice if you get those Fire 83 headshots. An increase to the bullet velocity as well is going to be absolutely insane. But they have reduced the maximum damage from 31 to 30. So that's a little, little sad, but it's okay. And reduced the minimum damage from 28 to 27. So a little nerf to the damage here, but this is still going to be a very, very powerful gun at those longer distances in this game because the bullet velocity is going to be like 1,558 meters per second so that's going to be really fast and they've increased the bullet velocity on the xm4 from 550 to 657 so that's a nice little boost there as well lmg changes across the board bullet velocity changes on all these particular weapons and then they reduce the bullet velocity bonus from the task force barrel across the board so again making changes to give them more bullet velocity but taking it away with the task force option and people are still going to run the task force barrel on the lmgs here and all the pistols have had increases to their bullet velocity which is just really really nice for me because i love those pistols man 200, 206, 300 to 313, and 250 to 257 is not super significant, but again, something we're definitely worth talking about, and they have added flinch to the R1 Shadow Hunter. The rest of this is pretty insignificant, and stuff you'll just basically find out on your own. There's lots of different changes here, like they added like literally all the changes to the zombie weapons, so many buffs, man, like that's absolutely ridiculous, we're definitely not going to go over that, because this video will be about 200 minutes long. But again, very, very excited, of course, about the mid-season update here. A little let down by the AM63 not coming with the update coming mid-season, but we'll have to wait and see how that one goes. And yeah, that's a very, very cool update. Hopefully very, very good changes with these weapon balancing, weapon tuning stuff. All very, very exciting. Got to test out all the snipers, got to test out all the assault rifles again, see which is the best, and we'll talk about it soon. So thank you very much for watching this one, and I will see you in the next video. Bye!